Hey guys, Scripture here with another video, and this is uh, another just bizarre decision by Lucasfilm. And I'm assuming, um, even with the video games, they're they're approving the storylines in terms of you know what they do to canon. And so this is just another stupid move. Uh, it has to do Star Wars Outlaws. Star Wars canon has created a massive original trilogy plot hole that really needs to be filled. Yay! More plot holes! Yay! Pablo Hidalgo and Dave Filoni in the story group. Yay! Like, honestly, I don't, I don't know what these people do all day. It, it's so bizarre. It's created a plot hole in the real, original trilogy and needs to be fixed. Nearly every project in Star Wars uh, franchise is built around the narrative created in the original trilogy. The prequels and sequels developed Darth Vader's and Skywalker's family legacies. Clone Wars deepened the Jedi lore. Rebels informed us about the Rebellion's origins and so on. However, one relatively new corner of the Star Wars franchise hasn't been as dependent on the original trilogy storytelling, The Mandalorian. Uh, Disney Plus, blah, 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 blah. The Mandalorian's independent role in the franchise has raised one major question. Where were the Mandalorians during the events of the original trilogy? Where was Ahsoka? <laughs> like, so I'm saying, guys, Dave just does stuff. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if it makes sense. Where was Ahsoka? What was she doing? And why doesn't anyone ever ask that? I guess some people do. It's bizarre. It, it just they're, they're just ruining it all. <laughs> it's, it's, aside from Boba Fett's brief appearance, a character who doesn't even consider himself to be a Mandalorian, the Mandalorians played no role in the original trilogy. Real world reason for this, of course, is that the concept of Mandalorian culture simply hadn't been created yet. While it gained steam in the now defunct Star Wars Legends continuity... Mandalorians as a whole weren't a major part of Star Wars canon until they were officially introduced in the Star Wars prequel trilogy and the Clone Wars. Sort of in the prequel trilogy, I guess, with Jango. But there wasn't any, like, major details. It was so open-ended that they could do anything with it. And the Clone Wars uh, further, and further developed in Star Wars Rebels. I'm telling you guys, the Clone Wars are a major problem. I've been saying this for years, and a lot of people don't like me for it. A lot of people love the Clone Wars. It created huge problems, because then you have to explain things. No, they don't make the prequels any better, as far as I'm concerned. The prequels are what they are. They're fine. They're not good. They're fine. <laughs> the Clone Wars actually just create more, more questions and problems, and here we go again, right? Because Dave had to have his big... Uh, uh, Mandalorian arc in the Clone Wars, and so now, now what? Where, where were they? Right? Where was Ahsoka? Right? Because he had to have his big Ahsoka arc, and he couldn't let her die. These are problems. And again, it's—I've said this so many times. It, it's all about content. You know, people go after YouTubers. Well, they're just making content. Yeah, but they're YouTubers. They're not changing Star Wars canon. And the Clone Wars was all about getting content because they had a lot of seasons a lot of episodes there was money to be made and they needed content so they made all these new things and witches and all this nonsense and then some of it just doesn't get explained and, it, and it's just left to be like well what happened with those guys oh well what what happened with uh, uh, ahsoka like so it's just it, it, the problems that show creates, and I'm talking like lore problems, force issues, tons of stuff. And that doesn't mean all of it's bad. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying the whole thing's just junk. I'm just saying there's some stuff in there that creates problems. And you kind of have to ignore that to enjoy the movies. Especially the originals. As Mandalorian history became an increasingly important part of Star Wars lore with the debut of The Mandalorian, The Mandalorian Purge became an undeniably important event in the Star Wars timeline. It was supposed to explain the Mandalorian's absence in the original trilogy. See? See? So they made this Mandalorian thing because we can't just let Boba Fett and Jango Fett exist, right? So, so, and George started the ball rolling with that. So Boba Fett was a cool character. People liked him. His toy sold out everywhere. It's still extremely uh, um, sought after, the original Boba Fett toy. And the reason for that is because dudes just thought he was just this really awesome cool bounty hunter with his, his his outfit and mannerisms his ship we all thought his ship was like the coolest it was the closest thing to the to the falcon in terms of like coolness level and 
then George was like, oh, well, everybody likes Boba Fett, so I'm going to make his son, or I mean, I'm going to make his dad the clone. We're going to have another Boba Fett in the prequels. Okay, and, and, and he took it to a certain point, and then he left it open-ended. And then Dave decided to make an entire race of all these people, and they have their own planet. And then it's like, oh no, what do we do? They're, they're not there in the original trilogy. Oh, we'll, we'll make it so they get purged. So they're writing stories based on trying to make it make sense instead of writing good stories, right? This is what they've been doing for a very, very long time. Now, now they're at the point where they don't even care if it makes sense. <laughs> now they're just like, whatever, just acolyte, it doesn't matter, just throw it out there. But when you're writing from that type of a, um, a starting point, a foundation, chances are pretty good that you're going to end up either doing something stupid that you didn't think of or something like that will happen. Something, something will get missed, right? It was supposed to explain the Mandalorian's absence in the original trilogy since surely a warrior culture as well equipped as the Mandalorians would want to fight back against their oppressors. The franchise needed to be able to explain their absence and the vagueness of the Night of a Thousand Tears and the destruction of Mandalore gave the franchise plausible deniability. Yes, I would agree with that. It did give them plausible deniability. Was it, is it satisfactory? Not really, but it does give you plausible deniability. Which I guess is the best we can hope for these days with Star Wars over the last 20 years of Star Wars. Now, however, Star Wars is officially confirmed when the Great Purge took place. Like, this is, this is the, this is the level of stupidity right now with Star Wars. Creating a massive plot hole in the original trilogy. In the game, Star Wars Outlaws, which sucks. It's revealed that the Purge of Mandalore took place in 3 ABY. Star Wars Timeline is divided to BBY before Battle of Yavin, ABY after Battle of Yavin, if you didn't know. Following the destruction of the first Death Star in the original Star Wars movie, later retitled A New Hope, for context, Return of the Jedi is set in 4 ABY. These people are idiots. <laughs> they, they, find, they, they had left themselves plausible deniability, unsatisfactory, to, unsatisfying to me, but it is explained more or less. Then they go do something stupid like this. I'm telling you guys, they don't care. They don't care if any of it makes sense anymore. They're just like, whatever. Just throw it on there. Just make it up. It doesn't matter. Jedi takes place, what, three years after Empire. And Empire takes place, what, a year after. Uh, so there's a five year, there's five years in there. So for four years, the Mandalorians just ignored what was going on and didn't care. Just like Ahsoka. It, like, that's essentially what this, that's what happened. They just, oh, well, you know, there's a, there's the Empire and they're oppressing everybody and they're going to oppress us and whatever. Let's just chillax. <laughs> chillax on Mandalore <laughs> and take our baths because we took our helmets off and take our baths in full armor. <laughs> No, I mean, this is, this is, it's the same, like I said, it's the same with Ahsoka. What was she doing? But Dave couldn't kill her off. He couldn't just let Vader kill her, which is what should have happened, which would have been a very, very good end to her character. And it would have added and informed Vader even more. But he couldn't do it. And so now she's alive, Mandalorians are everywhere, but for some reason they don't get involved. It doesn't make any sense. No one knows. Right? Now they'll write some stupid, obscure comic book that, you know, 50 people read to try and explain this. Before this, there were two logical explanations for the Mandalorian's absence. Either the Great Purge happened at the beginning of the war, killing millions of Mandalorians and destroying their homeworld, or the Purge happened as part of Operation Cinder after the Battle of Endor, and the majority of Mandalorians had remained loyal to the Empire the whole time, giving them no reason to be involved in the fight. With Star Wars Outlaws, new information, neither explanation makes sense. Yeah, so they weren't loyal to the Empire, and they just didn't do anything. <laughs> and you know maybe they did this on purpose Why wh we no longer know what the Mandalorians were doing during the original trilogy maybe they did this on purpose content now they'll have to explain it there'll be some comic book or be something right this is what they do it's J.J. Abrams mystery box style thing where they just leave it and then oh buy this new thing and you'll find out why it's ridiculous it's like it is purely based on money like the creative process has been 
utterly and completely hijacked. I know it's always been hijacked to some degree. I'm not an idiot. Even with George, I'm not an idiot. George liked to make a lot of money. I'm not stupid. But at least it was a part of the issue. Now it's the entire issue is how do we make more money? How do we make more content? And that's probably why they allowed this. Oh, well, all the, all the fans of Mandalore and the Mandalorians are going to be like, whoa, whoa, that's weird. What are we going to do? Hopefully they come out with something that explains this. That's, that's, I'll bet you that's exactly what they're thinking. But they're so stupid because people are getting sick of this crap. Uh, we know that a major, a major Mandalorian family, Clan Wren, turned their back on the Empire in 1 BBY, courtesy of Star Wars Rebels and Sabine Wren. This would explain why the Empire and Moff Gideon decided to target Mandalore uh, during the war. But it doesn't explain why the Mandalorians didn't join the Rebel Alliance in the fight against the Empire during the original trilogy. This is especially notable since Wren who was in close contact with Mandalorian leader Bo-Katan Kriz, had ties to Rebel Command. They're just dipsticks, folks. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, Did only Clan Wren fight back against the Mandalorians? Why did the Empire wait four years after the events of Rebels to attack them? We know what Moff Gideon was... uh, We know that Moff Gideon was after Mandalore's resources, but he could have bombarded the planet at any time. Surely the Empire was afraid of what the Mandalorians might be able to do to them. Something doesn't add up. Uh, Moff Gideon... Okay, whatever. The Mandalorians are clearly here to stay. They've been a staple of Star Wars mythology since the Clone Wars, and with the upcoming rise of the Mandalorian and Grogu, the Mandalorian area culmination movie, they will only become more important. Star Wars needs to properly solidify its timeline, though. The longer this confusion lasts, the less Star Wars New Republic era in the Mandalorian's history will make sense. But again, you know, more content. We'll we'll, we'll 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 give you an answer someday with some book or something that you gotta buy. You gotta buy it. Buy our stuff. <laughs> it's just you guys, man. Like, is this? Are you guys like? Do you guys like? Are you finding this? Is this getting a little stupid now? Like, are are we finally reaching the point where we're finally accepting how awful this is? And 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 just Disney's such a crap company. It's just garbage now it is like who like they have this huge story group you got pablo you got dave and they can't figure it out it, it, it's just awful and like i said at the beginning of this video guys the clone wars was the beginning of the end it, it, it was actually before disney bought the ip that it was starting it was the snowball had started rolling down the hill And again, I know a lot of people don't like that, but the more you think about it, and as time keeps going on, that's what's happening. If that show didn't exist, we wouldn't even be worrying about this stuff. We wouldn't even be worrying about it. But they had to make a cartoon and canonized it, right? Rebels, right? With the space whales, and now we're in other galaxies, because he can't kill off Ezra. He can't be dead. Thrawn can't be dead, right? Dave can't let them die. You just got to have them come back now, and... Other galaxies, and it's it's just it's just it's just content, and and it's lazy, and you know it's lazy because they do stuff like this where they don't think about the ramifications, or they do, and it's just to make more content that's lazy. <laughs> There'll be more mystery boxes and more questions, and just a never-ending cycle. Never should have been on TV, Star Wars, other than you know Ewok cartoons, fine, silly little stuff like that. But, like, base canon storylines should never. You can have Ewok, you know, cartoons off on the side that have nothing to do with anything. They have nothing to do with the greater galaxy stuff. Even though, I, you know, I still think it's more interesting when it does. But it's for little kids. It's for six-year-olds. And the Clone Wars was the beginning of the end. It It was, you know, it's too much content. Too many things. Too many things that have to get explained. Just way too much. And again, I'm, I know people like it. I'm not saying it's all bad. I'm just saying, w- what would have been bad about never having that happen? About always keeping Star Wars on the big screen, only in movie form? What would have been bad about that? Would that have ruined anybody's life? If, if you never knew Clone Wars existed because it never did, would you even care? No, probably. No, well, you wouldn't because it didn't exist. So anyways, you know, another one now, another screw up. Uh, where's Ahsoka? Where's Ahsoka in the OT? You know, it's just, none of it makes sense. It's so stupid. Star Wars was such an easy thing to, to write and easy to keep up with and easy to understand. 
and they just couldn't help themselves from making just insane amounts of content to the point now where it's just an absolute muddied mess. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, help us the channel. Let me know down below what you think. Feel free to check anything else on my channel. Have yourselves a really good day.